and hope they're having a good time and glad they have them out. We need to do this more often because it's good to go to sports games and enjoy life. Good to enjoy life together. Now, now these are all the bowling folks you got here with you today, Yeah, right? man. And I'm going to beat them all Saturday. <laughs> oh, y'all going out Saturday? We're going out Saturday. Ask Mr. Smith back there. Tell him I'm going to beat him. How bad you going to beat him? I'm going to beat him badly. I'm going to beat him two games to three games or two. Now, how long has the bowling tradition been going on? You've been doing this for a while, right? About 10 years. About 10 years? Yeah. yeah about 10 years. One of the best is Lil' Tina Raphael. Is that right? Lil' Raphael is the best. Lil' Raphael. Lil' Raphael. Yeah. Lil' Raphael. No kid. He's never your old kid. Tell the boy back there. Bowl his butt off, huh? Yeah, he beats us sometimes. He beats us all sometimes. All right. That's true. So I'm glad to be here as a, as a guest of uh, the owner, Peter Angelos, who gave us 150 tickets for the family and the buses. And the buses. And the buses. Is that the right? That's boy to say that. That's really a gift. Every time, never. He not once. Since the sixties. So what happens tonight if they lose? They're not going to. That's They're not even in the vocabulary, is it? Not the vocabulary. All right. Win. And we have it here, right on tape. You got to worry about it. They got to worry about it. One year, it's been years. What's your prediction? What's the score? Oh, I never predicted the score. I'm uh, probably about <laughs> seventy-three. Okay. It's gonna be a win, though, right? Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, for the whole season. That's right. That's what we need. Uh, That's right. Well, 25 years ago, yeah. John White and I were trying to get the public accommodations bill passed for Baltimore City. And at that time, the blacks could not eat in any restaurants uh, downtown, nor stayed in the hotels. We were referred to this guy who was the youngest city councilman of Baltimore City at that time when there were 21 city councilmen. We only had one black at the time. We needed 11 votes. So we were sure of four, four from the black community and four from the Jewish community. He was from a strictly Italian community. <laughs> he persuaded a lot of them to vote for the bill. And for that, he lost the next election. But we are grateful to him because the next year, the Postal Alliance held as the first black organization conference at the Law Baltimore Hotel back in 1962. So we're always grateful for him for what he did to get that bill passed. Not only is that, when the baseball players went on a strike several years ago, it required a unanimous vote of all the owners to, set, to break the strike. This was the one owner that said no, because he believed in unionism and he believed in the common man. So And because of that, we want to present him with the Human Rights Award to Peter G. Angelos Esquire, Outstanding Leadership for the Enactment of the Public Accommodations Law for the City of Baltimore, Maryland, 1961, presented August 18, 2006 by the Royal Extended Family Rep, 
Reverend Dr. Milton Holmes, founder, and Sherry Gardner, president. Thank you very much, Reverend Holmes. I remember that as if it was yesterday. I wish it was because we were 45 years younger. <laughs> but you can't turn the clock back. Uh, but I will say I'm delighted to see you all here this evening. Uh, this is a great award and I appreciate it very much. It brings back great memories. Uh, what, what the Reverend didn't say is that he and John White had a lot to do with us getting the bill through because they worked real hard. They were there all the time and I came to know I just called him Milk back then, but I call him Reverend Holmes now. And John White, who's a great guy who's no longer with us, unfortunately. But anyway, we worked together. We got the votes, we put it together. It was the first public accommodations ordinance passed in the state of Maryland. And that was 1961. Uh, it was a great thing to, a great credit to you, Reverend Holmes, for all you did, and John, and all the other people, the young people especially back then, who persevered, uh, who got out there and got the public to understand <clears throat> what a terrible injustice it was to discriminate against the African American community, but just generally to know that no one should be discriminated against. So we set the pace back then and hopefully we've continued it, you and I growing old together. Yes, <laughs> and for the years that we have left, we're gonna keep it up and we're gonna keep working for the right causes. And there are plenty, there's plenty of work out there to be done. You all, you younger people, uh, you gotta keep it going. So uh, anyway, I'm pleased to get this award and I'm pleased to see my old friend here. And I'm glad you all came to see the ball game tonight. And I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Thank you. And in closing, let me say, come back again and make sure that this reverend comes with you because it's always good to see you. All right. We want to say hurrah, hurrah, hurrah for the complimentary tickets and the bus provided for us. Yeah. You can do it again next year. I mean, you come back here, let's say hello again. Right. Thank you. you bring the sunshine that brightens up my day. You hold the key that fits my heart. It's an honor to be in between these two men, yes. my dad and Uncle Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Get that old, you call me Uncle. You're right. Moment to be here today. Five days before my birthday, couldn't have a better gift than this. I appreciate all that Mr. Angelos has done with my dad, and I appreciate all that my dad has done with the community and the world. So God bless you all. No! You too, yeah. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.